Welcome to West Country Wanderings and welcome to another one of my monthly vlogs. This is the vlog for the month of April 2022. We're here in fabulous spring sunshine. It's absolutely terrific. Beautiful. But where am I? Well, I'm actually in the county of Somerset today. I'm in part of Somerset called Baines. We've come across that before. Bath and North East Somerset. And we're in just inside the Cotswold AONB. We're actually in the southern tip of it. The other day I did a walk up Breeden Hill where I was on the western extremity of the Cotswolds and now I'm on the southern extremity of the Cotswold AONB. But specifically, I'm in a village called Wellow. Why have I decided to come to Wellow? Well, the other day, I think it popped up on Twitter or my newsfeed or whatever, and it showed you the top five places to live in the southwest. And I looked at them, I can't remember all the places in there. Some of them you'll probably be familiar with uh, yourselves. And one of them is quite close to where I currently live in Gloucestershire. However, this village was named Wellow. I'd never heard of it before. So of course I go had to Google it to see what this village was like. And when I stumbled upon it and saw the photographs of it, and more importantly, the interest and history that lies behind this village, I thought, that's got to be the place I do my next monthly vlog from. So here I am in the delightful Wellow in Somerset. So why not join me here for another monthly vlog on West Country Wanderings. Now just here lies a footbridge, metal footbridge, not particularly attractive or aesthetically pleasing, of course, but it's what it goes over. It goes over the Wellow brick and just a quarter of a mile in that direction is a fabulous medieval pack horse bridge, which we'll have a look at shortly. It also has a Ford. A few other things about Wellow. It used to have a railway station. Now the railway station is rather special. I'm gonna be talking about that more in detail. Wellow has a, a free public car park. This is where I parked my car today, village car park. You don't have to pay to park here and there's loads of spaces there. In fact, when I turned up here this morning, I was the only car there. But if you walk back into the center of the village, you will see the railway station and what a railway station it was. It used to lie on the Somerset and Dorset line. Now, if you're into railways, particularly older railways and steam trains, you'll know all about it, the Somerset and Dorset. But sadly, the station here closed in 1966, but it was restored in the 1970s. And it was the gentleman that restored it is going to be part of our interest. I'll tell you more about that in a bit. Now, Wello also has a fantastic church. It's grade one listed. We'll have a closer look at that late in today's vlog. Also coming up, if you're a new subscriber, first of all, welcome to West Country Wanderings and thank you for being a new subscriber. Gained uh, quite a few new subscribers uh, since the last vlog, which was up in Warwickshire. And I'll refer back to the Warwickshire vlog in a bit as well. And also what I do on the monthly vlogs, the main purpose of them is to kind of review the past month to let you know what happened on the uh, creating that content, the, the 12 videos or so that I did during the month of uh, March and the earlier part of April. And also give you a sneak peek of what's coming up on West Country Wanderings. So before I tell you more about uh, the person that restored that station, keep you teasing, <laughs> in the 1970s, you will have heard of him, or if you haven't heard of him, you'll certainly have heard of one of the pieces of uh, art, there's a clue, art that uh, he created in the 1960s and also in the 1980s, another clue. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit more about this, this village. So yeah, we're, we're five miles uh, south of Bath. Bath is just basically over the hills. Well, you've run up the hill there. Um, I think it's called towards Hinton Hill and uh, you'd be able to drop down into uh, City of Bath. So I'm not going into Bath today. It's not an ideal place to do uh, monthly vlogs where I need to be quiet so I can talk to you wonderful people watching my channel, West Country Wanderings. But uh, yeah, to tell you a little bit more about the, uh, the, the, the village here, it has a population of just 529. Yeah, that's right, 529. 
Also, that includes the hamlets of Twinho, White Oxmead, oh, I love that name, White Oxmead, and Bagridge. So you add all those little hamlets in together, plus Wellow, and we'll look more at the detail in the village in a bit. It comes to 529, that's all. So I'm hoping that um, because it's become up, up there in the popularity rankings of the uh, Southwest, I'm just hoping it doesn't get spoiled. Um, please don't all come here at once to look at it. It is a nice place, but uh, don't flock here all at once. It is really unspoiled. And uh, I say most people probably haven't heard of it, even if, like me, you've uh, lived in the Southwest for some, well, in my case, m most of my life. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd never heard of this place. It's, it's an absolute delight. Now, there is a Neolithic long barrow here, which is in the care of English heritage. It's about three quarters of a mile in that direction. I'm not sure if I'm gonna get time today, because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do all these bits and pieces of filming around the village, telling you about the challenge stuff. If I've got time after that, and obviously we'll, we'll have light evening, so fingers crossed, I will have. I'll over, go over there and have a look at that because that sounds really interesting. So that's something you'd like to see yourselves. But to tell you a little bit about it, uh, it was, it's got multiple burial chambers. So similar to what we saw at Hetty Pegler's Tump when I did the Cotswold Way at the top of Coley Peak there on the, at the edge of the Cotswold Escarpment. <clears throat> and there's also a fossil ammonite which decorates the left door jam. I know that sounds very specific. Couldn't find a photo of it so if I go over there today I'll get a I'll get a, a photograph of that. Now the other thing to tell you about here is the geology because of course it just comes inside the uh, Cotswolds area, the Cotswold AOMB and as you can see it looks very Cotswold-like landscape here. We have got the limestone but apart from the limestone we have something else. We have a very clay base and it makes very good Fuller's Earth. And there used to be, in the end of the 19th century, a mine close to Wellow, which mined the clay and dried it and used it in all kinds of things to do with uh, pottery, drying things, using it as an absorbent material, lots of things in industrial processes. So that happened in Wellow's past. But largely, it's a very, very agricultural community, and I would imagine it's also a commuter village for the city of Bath. So I'll just tell you more about the railway station. I'll just insert a photograph that I took, a couple of photographs as I was coming out of that uh, village car park earlier on. Uh, obviously, bear in mind, if you do come to visit this village and look at the railway station, it is a private property, so uh, there isn't public access to it, but you can get a, a good view of it from the, uh, the public highway. That's the first thing to note. And as we said, it was on the Somerset and Dorset line, which essentially ran from the city of Bath just over yonder, down to the south coast, to, to Bournemouth. But it, it had competition, but particularly, of course, from the, the GWR, the Great Western, which also has a, another route, and of course, uh, that sadly closed. It opened in 1874 and was gone by 1966. Although you can work out, there is a bridge abutment, I'll put that in now, the, obviously they've demolished the bridge close to where the Ford is near uh, Wellow Brook and that medieval pack horse bridge. There is a railway bridge there which has obviously been destroyed but there's two fantastic uh, viaducts in the area that are still standing and you can certainly make out the course of the former railway route through the village and I do believe that that car park was formerly the station yard of the the uh, Wellow. Obviously the station is close to that and I would imagine that would have been perhaps used for maybe had like a cattle dock that, that type of thing. Uh, and obviously the line went then on to, towards Bath and then down towards the south coast. So who is this mysterious famous person that restored the railway station to its former glory in the 1970s after it closed in 1966? Well, his name of course was one per Peter Blake, or should I say Sir Peter Blake. And he is a very famous artist, particularly known for the pop art style. Now, he actually restored the station here at Wellow with his former wife. And his style, his wife was Jan Howard, and she was also an artist, an American artist, and they restored that together. Peter Blake was born in Dartford in Kent in, on the 25th of June, 1932. 
and he then went on to become educated at Gravesend Technical College and later, of course, the Royal College of Art. Now, Peter Blake's most famous piece of work, I'm sure you'll be familiar with this, was The Beatles, Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band, that fantastic album cover, that was his work. He also designed the single, the cover of the single for Band's Aids, do they know it's Christmas? So that would have been 1984. Sergeant Pepper, 66, I believe, possibly 67. I'm, I think it's 66. I'll put it in there. I should, should know that. Bit of a cultural history there. And his elements were collage. He would cut out bits of advertisements, bits from magazines, bits of images of celebrities, and use that to create a collage of different images to create one particular image. It was known as pop art. Obviously, the other proponent of the pop art style was Andy Warhol over the other side of the Atlantic Ocean in New York. And they are known for their bright, vivid colors. They're very contemporary style. And it's obviously not so much about the painting with a paintbrush, but more about painting in terms of image, in terms of harder line edges and bright contrasting colours. But yes, yeah, sir, Peter Blake, I don't think he lives in Wellow now. I think he had this as a bolt hole. I believe he uh, has a, a large, I think it was a former ironmonger's warehouse in London. I'll drop that in, uh, which he uses for his large canvas artworks. But yes, he restored this fabulous station here in Wellow in Somerset. Now I've come to just outside of the village of Wallow to a place called Cleave or Cleaves Wood. And this wood is famous for one particular type of flower. Today we have an abundance of wild garlic, bluebells and wood anemones, which is absolutely delightful. I'll do a bit more of a tour in a minute. But it's for another plant that this wood just outside Wallow is famous for. And that is the Spiked Star of Bethlehem. It's very rare. You only see it around this part of Bath, and it's also sometimes known as the Bath Asparagus. I've not seen any as yet, but I with I do, you'll be certain of seeing a photograph, including in today's video. And while I'm looking for that spiked star of Bethlehem, I don't know if, they, I don't know if I'll be able to find one, I'll insert a stock photograph of it so you can see what it looks like. Um, it does look like, um, well, couple of other wooden plants you're maybe more familiar with but uh, it isn't this particular one so I'm being careful where I stand around here as well. I feel very privileged to have come into this wood here today. So while I'm doing that I'll also tell you about uh, what's been happening on my channel, what's happened since the last vlog. Well the last vlog of course was at uh, Wooten Warren in Warwickshire, that's always a mouthful isn't it? And I wasn't feeling particularly well, I hadn't been feeling particularly well for the previous four or five weeks before that and uh, I had some difficulty making that uh, video and I certainly expressed a bit of a concern about my mental health at that uh, time. Well I can report that I am feeling a lot better. I think the spring weather has certainly boosted my spirits and I am feeling a bit more on form able to make videos again. But the first video I made after that one was I was down in Cornwall. I had a trip on the train to Cornwall. I met up with my daughter we caught the train to Bodmin Parkway and we walked from there to the National Trust property at Lan Hydrock. Now my daughter for a couple of years has been mentioning to me about this hidden Victorian swimming pool. All at parts of the park that are belong to the National Trust so it is accessible but it is difficult to find out information about this swimming pool even on the National Trust website but they do include a little bit of advice as to how to get it. So what I decided to do rather than decide to do it as a not an ordinary vlog I just took my camera along there and did some photographs and then decided to do those and edit the cuts in the photographs when I'm doing the, the transition from one photograph to the other. And I did a lot of them in monochrome as well and set that to some atmospheric music. Well, that was a result of that uh, hidden swimming pool in Cornwall. It seemed to have been uh, pretty well received, so thank you for that. And of course, it was one of my uh, not only Cornwall series and short bites, and, and speaking of short bites, 
they do seem to be proving more popular than when I first did them. When I first launched the Short Bite series, it literally was a little bit of filler in between my other videos, because obviously making a video such as the one today does take a bit of time. It actually probably takes the best part of two full days, if not more, probably three days if you include the planning for it, because obviously today is a full day's filming, including the travel time. Tomorrow will be a full day's editing for it. And of course there was the research stage before that and a little bit of research and finding some bits and clips on the web as well. So it can take a, a bit of time just to do a 30, 40 minute video with it. Whereas the short bites, they, they can be a bit shorter. I say it can be, but they can still sometimes take quite a bit of work in the editing process as well. So yeah, they're, it, there's no, they're not so like quick fixes as I thought they perhaps would be when I start, if you see what I mean. But I will continue to do the, the short bites. What I do is when I go to particular, it seems to work well with particular villages and smaller towns, the format, um, when I don't want to walk around, uh, I want to be inconspicuous to the people where I'm visiting. I can go around with a smaller camera. I don't need a fluffy microphone on top and take photographs and then edit that. So yeah, I continue with that. So that was the first one that I did last month. Now I also did Cotswold Walks number four and I went and followed the River Colne, delightful place. I also had trouble making that video because I was able to walk physically, obviously, of course, because I wasn't feeling particularly well. I really didn't want to come in contact with anybody else at all. And uh, there is a busy Cotswold village there, one of the most famous villages in the Cotswolds, and that is Bybury, of course. And that walk went very close to Bybury and I was make, putting myself on edge doing that and I think that comes across in the video I'm not as perhaps relaxed as what I should be making a video and uh, that is obviously some of the things I have to battle with 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 the mental health but so I'm feeling better now so yeah I did that console walk five uh, sorry four and to just literally last night, late last night, in fact, uh, Cotswold Walks 5 landed and I was feeling better doing that one and I really enjoyed making that and that was the trip up Breeden Hill from a village called Great Combaton, right on the western edge of the Cotswold AOMB. Fabulous views from the top. We haven't seen that one yet. Uh, really, really enjoyed making those. I will continue to, to do uh, Cotswold walks. Um, there'll be all different parts of the, the Cotswolds from the southern to the northern, eastern and the western and all the bits in the middle. Sometimes there'll be hill walks, sometimes there'll be village explorers and sometimes they'll be following rivers and combinations of those. So they seem to be uh, working out to be uh, pretty popular on the channel. So, so that happened. And then I went to uh, a village called Fladbury, which is in the Vale of Evesham. In fact, it was uh, two villages close together, Fladbury and Cropthorne. They're right on the banks of the River Avon. And we had a look at both of those. In particular, in Fladbury, I was very impressed with their community orchard. They had a fantastic community orchard there. And all, of course, you had all of that apple blossom on the trees there, ready coming out. And it was being very well maintained by the villagers there. Very impressed with those two villages near Evesham. Now the next most viewed video on my channel last month, or I might have landed early part of April actually, month. When I say month, I mean the previous four or five weeks since I made the last vlog, not necessarily the strict calendar month, if you see what I mean, was of course the uh, latest canal update for the Stradwater Thames and Seven Canal. It was a little bit disappointing making that one because I was banking on the fact that that towpath the ocean where they put in that railway bridge, of course, I've spoken many times on this channel about. I was hoping that the towpath was reopened. Now, they had refilled the ocean with water, which was great, but the towpath hasn't opened, so it was slightly disappointing for that. But yeah, I did uh, this walk to explore a lot of the, te the Thames and Seven section, uh, eastern section of that, and uh, we went to a place called Icy where you could see an old abandoned bridge and a fantastic um, reserved bridge bridge on the TNS, which the volunteers from the TNS, uh, sorry, the Cotswolds Canal Trust had restored. And that was wonderful to see that. And I shared that on the video as well. I also did another railway video, this time at Long Marston in Warwickshire. Now this was a little bit different to the Tithering and other railways I've done, which you tend to be on following disused railways or reopened railways or stations and things like that. This was nothing to do with that. This was actually a depot where they store locomotives. They are actually also now renovate and build new locomotives and coaches. So this was something completely different and 
the response to that video seems to be that very few people seem to have heard of it. I only actually came across it when I was doing uh, looking for research for the Gloucestershire Warwickshire Railway. Uh, currently, their most northern station is Broadmain. Obviously, they want to link up to Honeybourne on the Cotswold line. But it's what's beyond Honeybourne which intrigued me. I saw a little loop and kind of a black lines looping around on the OS Mark. I thought, well, hello, what's all that about? Googled it and found out it used to be at a military railway, an MOD depot for storage depot, closed in the 1990s, and is now used by four different uh, railway companies for storage of wagons and locomotives and renovation. And I told you a story about that in the Longmaston video. And finally, we had uh, a short bite at a place called Slimbridge, the Wildlife and Wetlands Trust. There was a uh, photo session I did there. It was a delightful place to, to, to go around uh, Slimbridge there and uh, capture some of the, uh, the birds. And uh, particularly the Wildlife and Wetlands Trust staff, they're very helpful. I certainly encourage people to use their cameras there. If you do visit there, you'll see lots and lots of the other photographers there. People there with much, much bigger lenses than mine. Huge, you know, 400, 800 millimeter telephoto lenses, that, that type of thing, which I, I, I don't have, and which is impractical for the sort of uh, videos that I, and photography that I do, because it's too, too far too bulky to hike up a, a great big hill with that sort of thing. But uh, yeah, so you, you saw that there and uh, they were very helpful pointing out the different types of uh, species there and uh, that seemed to have gone down really well. And I also done another short bite down in Devon. Uh, so we'd had a Cornwall one, we had a Devon one as well and we went to Topsham, had a look at Topsham. I caught uh, the, the train down there and uh, had a fabulous time looking around that uh, wonderful seaport which links into Devon's capital, Exeter. And finally, there was also another Herefordshire and Gloucestershire Canal video, number three, when we were looking at an entrance to a tunnel. And I walked along the, the, the top of it, it was a shorter tunnel section there. And just to let you know, I will be going back to uncover more sections of the Herefordshire and Gloucestershire Canal, showing you restored sections. And again, though they're not quite as popular as the Stradwater and Thames and Seven. It doesn't get quite such a high profile, I guess. And obviously there isn't so much active restoration. There is some. Um, and I'll be going to a place called Malswick over the next couple of weeks to show you what's happening there. But it's not so active as what's happening on the Stradwater at the moment. But uh, there is some interest in that. So I will continue making those videos on the Herefordshire and Gloucestershire Canal. Now I've come around the back of the church and we're going to have a look at the Church of St Julian's here in Wellow shortly. I'll take some photographs, do it with a sequence of music, you know the sort of thing I, I usually do. I'll put in some subtitles giving you a bit of the history here. As I say, it's a grade one listed church. I think I'm supposed to look out for something in the porch as well. So no, not the porch, the, uh, the long bow of the porch here. So we're going to have a look at that. Before I do any of that though, I just wanted to wrap up the, uh, all the business to do with West Country wanderings. So that covered everything when I was in the wood that has happened in the previous month, or what's coming up in the rest of April going through into May. Well, lots of different things in a word. I've got it slated down for, for lots of different projects. Uh, the most important, of course, is the start of the Seven Way. I, uh, lots of different reasons why I've been delaying that. I was hoping to start it a bit earlier in the year, but it, of course the ground was still wet and that sort of thing. So I am going to hope to start that shortly. When I do start it, however, please be aware, because I'll need to be away from home for at least a week to 10 days, I won't be able to do any other videos other than the Seven Way in the intervening period. So uh, I'll put up a, an announcement because I've got like a com community page, look out for that and I'll tell you when that's happening. So if you're wondering why my channel does go a little bit quiet and then there'll be a burst of activity, stuff landing about the Seven Way. Aside from the Seven Way, lots of other things happening. Of course, the, the next canal update number nine will be launching just a few days after that towpath launches or opens, reopens should I say, underneath the bridge around to Bonds Mill on the Stridewater Canal. As soon as that happens, I'll do that. I'll also be filming some stuff around Marston Maisie and the Kempsford area on the Thames and Seven to bring you all up to date with what's happening there. I, ooh, church bells, here we go. <laughs> what time is it? That must be four o'clock, here we go. So I started filming here about uh, 11ish this morning to so just goes to show how long it's uh, taken today. I've still got a few other bits to do. There we go, I'll just wait for the bells.
so yes, yeah, so the next canal update, there'll be line, there'll also be a fourth Herefordshire and Gloucestershire Canal. There'll also be a number six Cotswold Walk. I'm not sure where that's going to be yet. Probably another River Colman, so look out for that. So there'll be some other content on, on that happening as well. Aside from all that, there'll be some railway bits and pieces. As I said, there'll be something to do with steam, steam railway. So uh, subscribe and hit the bell and then you'll be told when that uh, lands. So that will be happening as well. And mixed of all that lot, there'll be some short bites probably from the Devon and Cornwall area. So there'll be some stuff happening from the places that are further southwest of where I currently am here in Somerset today. So yeah, lots of happening. Love to hear your thoughts. If you drop a comment below on today's vlog, let me know what you enjoyed in the previous month, what you'd like to see more of. I'll do my level best to do that. Obviously, I've only got so many hours in the day to do stuff and I've got other things to do in my life as well, other than uh, YouTube, of course. But uh, yeah, I, I try to fit in a variety of different things. And I know the canals generally do the, the best on my channel, but I, they, they're not gonna be my sole focus on this channel. There's, as I said, there'll be the other things that I do as well, because I know different people like different things, which is, Obviously, all oh, goes up to make a more interesting world, but I, I like all of it. I like the countryside and that. Oh, one other thing I forgot. The woodland, I know, I just thought that because we did the bluebells in the woodland today. I am going back to my woodland. I was hoping to have delivered that by the time I'd done this vlog here today. I haven't got round to it. So hopefully that's going to be happening over the next few days as well. So we get a spring update at the Gloucestershire woodland and revisit that. And I'll tell you some other bits and pieces about trees and spring and nature and all of that type of thing. Anyway, what I'm going to do now is going to head into the church, do a little bit some pieces there, and that'll be time to wrap today's video up. Well, that completes April's vlog here on West Country Wanderings for 2022. Hope it brought you up to date with what's been happening on the channel and what's going to be happening next month. And also a tour of this delightful village of Wellow here in wonderful Somerset. And I hope to be bringing more content from this county again very, very soon. But I've certainly enjoyed my day. Beautiful spring day in this very peaceful and hidden yet close to the city of Bath village here in Somerset. I've really, really enjoyed it. I hope you did it too. Love to hear from you. Please drop a comment below. Hit the bell and subscribe and then YouTube will then tell you when all West Country Wanderings videos upload. I say it's always a mixture of different stuff on my channel as I've already said, but uh, if you hit the bell and you may not be interested in everything I do, then YouTube will tell you when that particular one uploads, which may then take your fancy. Until next time, West Country Wanderings, take care of yourselves, look after yourselves, and I hope to see you on West Country Wanderings again 
very, very soon. All the best for now. Cheers. Goodbye. Welcome to this little extra at the end of my monthly April vlog here on West Country Wanderings. Behind me lies Stony Littleton Long Barrow, perhaps the finest long barrow in the entirety of the United Kingdom. This long barrow is 5,500 years old and was discovered by a farmer in 1760. Let's come over for a closer look inside. Now this is the main entrance to the Long Barrow of course and it was built in 3800 BC using local soil and stone but the large pieces here have been identified of coming and been quarried for some eight kilometers away which in those days was a long long way away in terms of getting them from that location to where they are here to be positioned just imagine the weight of that I know the ones at Stonehenge were dragged from somewhere in Pembrokeshire across half of South Wales and into, yeah, I know all that stuff, but I still think eight kilometers all those years ago, 3,800 series of me, there's a plane over our head. 3,800 BC is an incredible feat for those days. But there's something really more interesting just there. We'll have a closer look. Yes, it's this here. It's an ammonite fossil, and that has been put in to the main entrance of this long barrow. Now, according to the English Heritage plaque at the entrance to this site, it says, it was almost certainly placed there by the builders deliberately as form, well, a form of a style, I, I guess, to give it some character. And obviously they found that as they were uh, quarrying this stone locally, they would have come across that. Of course, you do get these when you, you're looking for quarried stone, local, local limestone here, of course. They obviously placed that there deliberately in a prominent place to give this a bit of extra style, just like we would these days in terms of, oh, I don't know, coins or something on the top of a, a drive or maybe even a garden gnome. So now looking right inside the long barrow, the uh, red and white strip and that box affair there, that is a temporary repair. English Heritage have got a prop there to the right, obviously, to keep that upright. It does weather, of course, over the, I mean, it is uh, 5,000, what do we say, 5,500 years old. So uh, kind of, what do you expect <laughs> it being? That, that can't after all that uh, time. But uh, yeah, that's just propping up that there. And as you can see, the barrow goes quite some distance down there, probably down to about 30 meters. I'll move the camera a bit forward further in a moment. And there are chambers, just around the outside of that box there, to the left and to the right. I'll see if I can move the camera in a bit further. So yeah, you can see the main chamber, just move the camera up there a bit, that runs straight down in the middle there. And you have another chamber, which is just off to the left of the screen. And another chamber, I just move the camera around to the right there, obviously it's hidden by that. I'll just see if I can move it a bit further back. Here we go. and. You can see, I oh, will just move out the way because I'm causing a shadow across it. I've got reasonable light here at the moment. I am, this is not artificial lighting, this is purely, well, it's about six o'clock in the evening, so it's not bad actually, but I've got a very fast, it's got a fast lens on this. It's got a very wide aperture. So uh, should be able to see a reason without, without affecting the resolution too much. But there we go, that's the inside of Stony Lickleton. Long barrow, absolutely fantastic. And I say, I, I, the only one other one I've seen was that crawl inside I did at the one at, um, when we did the Cotswold Way, uh, Hetty Pegler's Tump. Uh, but this is far more extensive, it has more chambers to it, and it goes back much further 
as well, as you can see all the way down there. Absolutely fantastic. So I've just come out of the outside of the long barrow again, just to give you an indication of where we are, somewhere around there, I can't quite see it on the screen. You should be able to see the church at Wello where we were earlier. I'll just walk up the top of the long barrow so you get an indication of the scale of it as well here. So I've just walked from the front of the, the entrance of the long barrow. My camera is positioned almost directly above the front entrance and I'm standing now positioned right over the rear of the long barrow here just to give the indication of the extensive length of this long barrow here in Somerset. Now from the stony Littleton long barrow here in Somerset it really is time to say goodbye here on West Country Wanderings. I hope you enjoyed the vlog today. Take care, all the best, bye bye.